Now there's somebody chattering away inside yeah, there. Talking, yeah. Can somebody go and ask them uh -huh. to, to stop talking? Not exactly cash and carry, I say. <laughs> so we're back at the sexual revolution. Yeah. The sexual revolution, uh, well, look, I'm born in 1925, and I think they thought they were making one. That was the year The Great Gatsby was published, and Hemingway was beating his chest, and uh, everybody was getting drunk because of prohibition. And that released a lot of sexual tension in the land. So I come along just about that time. Growing up in Washington, everything was going on because Congress has always been unruly. And they think they are the lords of the earth and they have a great deal of sexual activity. Uh, so not, I mean, nothing, none of that would be surprising to me. I was quite used to so-and-so's mistress was this and that, whereas those writers who were the children of doctors in the Middle West or dentists in New York would be horrified because they wouldn't know of anyone's parent who was cheating on father or mother. I didn't know anybody whose parents were not, so that was a different kind of revolution. The breaking point for my generation is I went in the army at 17 and ended up in the Pacific for three years and uh, everything was going on that you could think of and it was an enormous breakthrough on every side. Here, there were 13 million of us taken away from home, so between army bases around the country where heterosexuality flourished, and then in the Pacific Islands where same sexuality flourished. And uh, nobody questioned it. Yes, the authorities did. Officers who had not, not gone overseas were very strict. Not wanting us to have any fun, just to be dead was their idea of a perfect uh, military operation. Those who survived, uh, tended to pair off from time to time. It's a great legend out in the Pacific about one entire island of Marines who just decided to pair off. There were no women around, so everybody, had, they had the sort of buddy system, and everybody acquired a buddy. And it was the talk of the Pacific. People would say, have you heard what's going on down in uh, Tarawa? Yes, I've heard, you know. Shocking, isn't it? Everybody wishing it would spread to our islands, but um, I was up in the Aleutians where it was too cold to do anything. Interesting. I guess uh, my dad actually was in the Navy at the same time, but he hasn't talked about that with me. But I, that gives me some information to ask him about next time I see him. You, know, you can torture him. Yeah. <laughs> How about, though, in the 70s? Perhaps the difference in the 70s was that maybe the, the sexual revolution became popularized or it came home in, in the heartland as wife swapping. Well, let's take it step by step. Now, the war goes on until 1945, and we're all stuck on these islands and in Europe. Uh, the next big break, many people tell me, was my book, The City and the Pillar, which is enjoying its 55th anniversary this year with a great symposium at Yale, and it was the first overtly where two normal boys uh, fall in love, and one carries the torch for the other, and the other one gets married and forgets all about it. And that was a breakthrough. It was also a big bestseller and much hated. The New York Times so hated it that they refused to take any advertising for the book and refused to review any other book of my next seven books because of The City and the Pillar. That's the New York Times as the guardian of morals. Uh, simultaneously, in 48, Dr. Alfred M. Kinsey, who is now being denigrated, but with such passion, because the religious right has really got its, uh, I never thought that they could get to Hollywood in a big way, but they did get to Hollywood in a big way. 
And now I, I was just asked to play a part in a movie about Dr. Kinsey, playing a wicked Southern, uh, uh, Southern congressman. And I would like to have done it because it was a good scene. And he th thought that the sexual revolution was communism. You know, communism is everywhere. You gotta watch out for it. And certainly it is there in the nuptial bed. And it was just full of that kind of shit. And I was longing to play it, but I had, at the last minute, I couldn't do it. There have been two books out about Kinsey that are scandalous or libelous, because I knew Kinsey. And he interviewed me. <laughs> he sent me a copy of Sexual Behavior in the Human Male. And we were both on the bestseller list. He nonfiction, I fiction. Perhaps we should have reversed it. Anyway, he inscribed it uh, with congratulations for your work in the field. And of course his field was fruit flies and I saw myself sitting there bisecting fruit flies for 20 years and being complimented for my work with insects and their exciting lives. <laughs>